Hello, this is Deborah Carmona here. I am sitting at my card making station. Yes, it's in my bedroom. Um, my husband doesn't seem to mind. I just have my little corner here and I have all my stuff around me. And I'm going to do a different kind of a video. I am making cards. Um, I have made this one using the same stamp set. And this one I used some embossing. I tried different colors. Then I just experimenting, put a little bit more color in that, try to use some snowflakes that kind of look like lace. That was the idea of lace because I just felt like all that color needed a little bit of something softening. And so I experiment. When I do cards, I like to make multiple ones. So I'm using this set called Lots of Lavender. So I guess it's actually supposed to be lavender. But hey, it could be whatever color I want to make it, right? Um, so I have my blocks and my inks are in front of me. And I'm going to try a different color this time. I've inked my stamp and I have my little piece of paper, which is on my stamping pad, so that I get a nice smooth. And this is just an experiment. Oops, it's stuck. Okay, that's a nice clean print. A good dark color. Now, um, when I did this before, I, you know, used that part right there for some color, and it's okay. It's, I really don't know that I like it. To me, it looks a little sloppy. I think it looks a little nicer in lavender. That's actually um, Mysteria Wonder. And I did some in blue, and I'm not totally, totally happy with the, that print. So I think I'm going to do things a little bit different. But I do like the leaves. I tried different color leaves. I tried Old Olive, and I thought that was too pale. I tried, um, I think it was Tranquil Tide, and I thought that was too dark. And I think I tried... Oh, what kind was it? Garden Green. And I liked that. So I like the leaves. So here are my leaves. There's this one and that one. So I'm going to use, my colors are kind of stacked in front of me. Olive, I mean um, Garden Green. Because I kind of liked the way that looked. So we open it up and I will ink the leaves. And what I have to do is I have to push that right on to where the leaves are going to go, right there. And I know I'm not showing you, but try to line it up. I'll give you a tour of my place in a little bit. Okay, so I'm slightly off. Oops. It's a little bit off. It's kind of hard to see. Where's the other one? I do better with this these two because there's only two leaves to line up. You can kind of see through the block, so it helps a little bit, but and if it's off, okay. And that looks good. Now I'll do the stem with the same color. I think that's the stem. Uh, oops, let me turn the card this way. I have my stem right here. And we'll put some green on the stem. We line it up and press there. The greens are done. Now the ribbon, well, what color shall the ribbon be? It depends on what color the flower should be. And I think I'm going to do something a little different. See, I, I will pull, when I get a new stamp set, I like to play with it and experiment and try different things. I want to try this too. I haven't used these yet, but I want to see how this all works together. But um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to color those. Do I want them to be blue? Do I want them to be lavender? I do have my set of colored pencils here, so I could just color them. I'll think on that for a little bit. But I do want to try this little one, so I'm going to pull out some more blocks. And I do like the, the color I just used, Fresh Fit. It has a nice dark outline. It's not too strong. Let me grab a piece of paper. Okay, my piece of paper is about the right size. That'll work. So we press 
our ink on here. We got good coverage. Now we put that on there. That's a pretty little design. All right, now we'll use the same green since I really liked it. Where are those leaves? My ink's back. I have a small space to work, so I must, I must put things back. Okay, I think these leaves right here, I think they match up. Okay, I gotta figure out which way they go. Well, let's see. There's kind of eyeballing it to try to figure out. Oh, I see there's some circles on there. See the circles? There's one, two, three, four, five leaves and two little circles. And I see that the stamp does have two little circles. So that's what that's for. So that could be a different color. Cool. No, it does not. Okay, that's not the right one. There are two different ones with uh, leaves. I need to switch to that one. So we'll just take that off, stick it aside, and we'll, we'll just, these are great because they just, they're clear and they stick on the block just like that, and that is the right one for the other side. So we line up the leaves, um, with the clear blocks it's nice because you can see through it. Okay, we got those leaves on there. Now for those two little circles. Where'd they go? They're here somewhere. I've lost them. Oh, right in front of me. Everything's so see-through, it's hard to find. Okay, we'll put those on the block. Let's see, the rows will probably be sort of a reddish tone. How about some kind of purple? I don't have too many purples. How about, it could be blue. I think I'll go with Mysteria Wonder. And we'll see how that looks. You have to learn to play. I've had a really busy day today. I haven't been home much. And so this is how I unwind. I'm home alone right now. And okay, that's very soft and subtle. Some blue. Now for the rose color. I got lots of rose red, um, real red, berry burst. Berry burst sounds like a good color. It's sort of a plummy red. Okay, so this last piece, this little blob, this is what it just looks like. It just looks like a blob of color. I'll put that on the, the other side. I got something there. I'm going to stick it on the other side so I can have a clean space to work. And I need to figure out which way it goes on here. Uh, look at the shape and try to match it up. Okay, I got it. Alright, we ink it. We have our ink. And now, I can't really see very good because the ink blocks it. But I think I'm pretty close. Okay, oops. I got ink on my thumb and so I got a smudge right here. Well, that's how that looks. So that could be used as a little decoration somewhere. All right, I need to put these inks away. I only have a small space. Oops, I just tipped my upside down and I got more ink on me. Well, my bathroom is right over there. I could take a pause and I could go wash my hands because I don't want to make cards with dirty hands because then you'll get smudges all over everything. So when I'm done, where's my tray? Everything's within arm reach. When I'm done with my blocks, I have this little tray that I take to the sink and I wash off all of my stamps. I just sort of collect them all and I go to the kitchen sink and I use some Dawn dish soap and I wash them off and then I set them on a towel to get, to get them to dry. I do have an ink pad cleaner, which is up here, and you open this up, and where the little slot is cut out, it has little um, water droplets, 
that's the wet side. So you take your spray and you clean it. Just kind of mist it. And then you can take your dirty block and you rub it on there. You get it clean and then you dry it on this side. So I'm just going to go over all my blocks to get them all clean. But I still like to take everything to the sink and wash it off when I'm done. But I don't usually just make one card. I make several. Whenever I do something, I make several at a time. Um, in front of me, I have a calendar of family events for each month. It's listed by the month. And I put the date and whose event, you know, August, September, and October are very busy. Five, six birthdays in October. November, nothing. Yay. And then December. I have eight events in December. Four anniversaries. Four birthdays in just the month of December. So, yeah, September through December is quite busy. So I'm really glad that there's nothing happening in January. So those are in front of me. And I have to check on them regularly so that I'm ready to make cards. I have a box of cards here ready made and they're categorized I have like little file folders I have some for a whole bunch for birthdays um, Christmas is empty really because I, when I do Christmas I do them all at once I have thoughts you know for sympathy or you know caring cards I have um, some that I leave kind of blank I just decorate the front um, let me give you an example like here's a card that I de decorated and that the time that I did this I did a whole bunch and I left it blank because I don't know what it's going to be so that right now this is could be any it could be an anniversary it could be a birthday or it could be a sympathy who knows so I have an any file and I do go to a card making class once a month and we make cards this is one that I made at the last card party and I enjoy trying new things and Sometimes I'll come home and I'll add a little something to it. Sometimes I can't figure out what the message is going to be, but I make different cards. I have a separate box for envelopes, but I can make my own envelopes. This box comes from IKEA, which is a great little size for housing all of the envelopes. I have large envelopes that I bought quite some time ago. You can buy them in a big box like this for large cards. And then I have um, smaller envelopes. And the typical size that I use, I keep an envelope here. This is the typical size of a card that I, I like to make um, because the regular eight and a half by, what is it? Eight and a half by 11 paper, if you cut it right down the middle, you can get two cards out of it. So this is a good size to get you know, two cards. So I, I keep all the envelopes separate. There are times when I like to make cards a little bit bigger, like right here for my husband. And I, I should have already sealed it up so I can't show you, but I'm proud of this. This is a, a, a really great card I made for my husband. And I think he's gonna like the message. And I made the envelope too. I have a device to make envelopes. And that is within arm's reach. This device right here. You can make any envelope any size. Well, actually, the smallest size is two by three and a half inch. It would need a five by five paper. Um, the largest would be a six by eight and a half inch. And so it tells you, once you figure, once you know what size um, card you're um, going to make, then it tells you what size your paper needs to be. And then it tells you how to score it. Um, you start, um, you, you put it, it tells you where to put it. You line up the edge of the paper right here. And then you punch it, which puts a little gap. And then you, you line it up with this line here. And then there's a little tool right here that you kind of run it down like this. And you put the fold mark. And then you just rotate. And it's going to look like this when you're all done. This is really cool. I love this. So I can make my own envelopes. I have learned from experience that it's better to use cardstock to make your envelopes because the mail, when they travel through the mail, 
they're very um, they go through a lot of abuse and if you use thinner paper like I did last time with just typing paper I thought I'd save money and use typing paper that was a bad decision because I happened to be on the other end visiting somebody in Texas when they got the card and their envelope was completely destroyed so definitely use cardstock lesson learned sometimes I will buy scrap paper um, in little bundles and I keep them in this basket so I can use small pieces as pieces get cut I keep a basket of all the little scraps because I try to use the scraps as much as possible so I usually check my scrap pile before cutting up a fresh piece of paper I do have lots of paper just as an example a collection of about three different three different sets of brights and neutrals and pastels uh, just a collection of paper to use from I prefer the, the, this that size paper because like I said if you cut it in half you can get a card out of the top and out of the bottom and now that I put all this stuff out I gotta put it all back I have a little basket right here where I keep all of my um, die cuts and my embossing can emboss different designs and I'll show you you see the different types of embossing designs and they're just here to help me see what I have to work with and I will occasionally do some examples of what I can do with them um, it's partly here for decoration, but it's also here to inspire me, to show me some of the possibilities of things that I can do. And I want to fill up this board with a bunch of designs eventually. And you can see, here's my calendar that tells me when everybody's having their birthdays, the anniversaries. These are family events that I don't want to forget. So here is my little workstation. It's just an old um, computer desk. It wasn't being used, and so I turned it into my card making station. And so it has this pull out tray that would be for like a laptop. Well, this is where um, I can set things and just get them out of our way temporarily. This is the organizer where I keep my clear mount blocks, my paper cutter. Sometimes I'll set that down here. Um, sometimes I'll put this down here to get it out of the way. Um, it's just a little shelf that sometimes it's handy to have a little extra space. So it works. I would love to have a larger space than this, but for now, this works to serve my purpose. I usually have the cards that I'm currently working on set out until I'm done working on that session. My pencils, inks that I kind of organized inside of this basket, glues, what, uh, watercolor pencils and markers, and, um, and dimensionals. And then over here, I have a shelf. I have the clear mount stamps, my card box, some extra supplies, um, the little cutout things or trims or ribbons, and my big shot for the die cuts, and the box where I keep the embossing folders and die cuts, scrap paper in the envelope box, and the larger papers. And in here I have drawers where I keep stamps there. Um, these ones I usually buy at the store. And my Christmas stamps here. Um, so that's what this, this shelf is. The theme is sort of a light green color, so I was delighted when I found this cute little lamp at uh, IKEA because it I was like, oh, that matches matches the sort of the theme color I have going over here with my um, stamping set. I also have a shelf over here where I keep my papers and some of my other supplies go up in there. And this also serves as the supply shelf for a lot of my basket making supplies for making pine needle baskets. So yeah, it's just a little corner and there's my bulletin board, which is relatively new. So I'm going to, <laughs> oh boy, I probably need to edit this because it's such a mess. 
But this is a different kind of a video. It's kind of hard to do. I'm, I thought I'd try using my iPad. Um, but I hope you enjoy this little tour. It's probably a bit disorganized. Maybe I can edit it and make it a little bit better. But uh, thanks for watching and um, don't forget to subscribe. Have a good evening.